Hi guys. In this module, we are going to be talking about formal poetry. So you've heard of sonnets probably over the course of your education in poetry. You've heard of maybe the terza rima form, um, which is the form that Dante used when he was writing his um, Paradise trilogy. Um, you may have heard of things like maybe a Sestina. Some people have heard of those, very few people, but some. Um, you've probably heard of things like iambic pentameter. You've probably read Dr. Seuss and you know that um, rhythm and meter are very important in poetry. In order to study formal poetry, especially technical forms like the sonnet, um, we need to understand poetic rhythm and a subset of rhythm which is poetic meter. So studying meter makes it necessary for us to understand some nuances of pronunciation in the English language. Um, meter relies on very carefully placed words to set up a particular rhythmic metrical structure. So, like I said before, you've probably heard of iambic pentameter. You know that Shakespeare used iambic pentameter in his writing, and iambic pentameter is a form of meter, but there are lots of other ones that we're gonna be talking about as we progress through this particular module and as we move into reading formal poetry. So, in order to identify poetic meter, we have to learn a process that's called scansion. Scansion is the process of marking stressed and unstressed syllables in a line. Um, a stressed syllable receives, basically it's a syllable that receives more emphasis than another syllable. An unstressed syllable is quieter. It has less oomph when we pronounce it. Um, <clears throat> when you scan a poem, it's always helpful to say the words out loud. So we have repeated to this point ad nauseum the fact that poetry is related to music. So when we are reading the poem, we always want to read the poem out loud, right? We've said that several times now. Reading the poem out loud is really going to help us as we scan it and figure out what's stressed, what's not stressed when we're working in the line. Um, remember that reading a poem out loud changes the way that we hear it and it actually sometimes changes the way that we pronounce things. So speaking the poem out loud is always important. Um, before we talk about scansion here, um, keep in mind that, um, do you guys remember we talked about dialect, right? Dialect is language spoken by definable groups of people. And even though we don't necessarily pay attention to the dialect when we're with other people who speak the same way we do, we might not notice that various people from different dialectic backgrounds pronounce words in differing ways. So when we scan a line of poetry, some of us might scan it slightly differently because we pronounce words slightly differently. And that's okay. But again, remember that reading the lines out loud then are really important because we wanna make sure that our scansion matches what we're hearing when we're actually reading the poem. Okay, so um, you might use a pencil when you scan a poem instead of using a pen because you might scan it a certain way according to a particular punct uh, uh, pronunciation structure that you're using. And then once you read it out loud, you might hear it slightly differently and wanna change some of your scanning marks. So use a pencil until you get really comfortable with scansion and then you can start scanning it in pen, okay? All right, so let's go way back to first grade for a second. When you were learning to spell and when you were learning to pronounce certain words, we learned to identify syllables, right? So scansion is, as I said, the process of marking syllables in a line of poetry. Um, it can be really helpful to determine then in a line right, in a poem, which words have more than one syllable and start there. 
Once you're more proficient in poetry, you can scan by ear. So you can just read it out loud and then you can sort of over pronounce everything. So give lots of oomph to those stress syllables and less oomph to those unstressed syllables and you can mark them from there. But here where we're getting started, the method that we're gonna use is to look at the multisyllabic words like this one and to determine how we're gonna, um, which, which syllables in here are stressed and which ones are unstressed. And then we'll go from there. So <clears throat> I've taken these lines from Rachel Haddis's poem, The Red Hat. It is on page 225 of our textbook. These lines are about from the middle. I just kind of grabbed them randomly. Now, um, you can, if you want, you can scan the whole poem if you decide to do that, you can go back and do that later. For now, we're just gonna work in these three lines so that you can kind of see what scansion is, okay? So, when we're talking about words that have multiple syllables in them, right? Syllable, the word syllable has three syllables. Multi-syllable has five syllables. College has two, etc. cetera, right? So, Let's determine which words in the line have more than one syllable. So parallel, right? Parallel has three syllables. Um, alone has two syllables, right? Alone. The watcher, right? Watcher, that has two. Um, maybe you use the clapping method when you're a kid, right? Watcher, how many times can you clap during um, pronouncing the word? Over here we have stretches, that's a two syllable word. We have elastic, that's a three syllable word. So these are the words that we're gonna start with as we prepare to scan the poem. Okay. We want to mark our syllables with these shapes, okay? This denotes a stressed syllable this denotes an unstressed syllable, and both of those are going to be important when we're determining um, what kind of meter there is in a line. We're gonna talk about meter soon, we're not gonna talk about it today, but these are the marks we're gonna use as we go through and identify what's what. <clears throat> so, if we're looking at the word parallel, Okay, that's one of our words. Um, alone. That's one of our words. Watcher. Stretches. And elastic. Okay, these are our multisyllabic words. We need to figure out how we're going to scan them. So once we've determined how many syllables we have, right? Parallel has three, parallel. Alone has two, alone. Watcher has two, watcher. Okay, stretches has two. Elastic has three. So we know that we need to make three marks in this one, two marks in this one, two here, uh, two here, and three here. All right, now we need to figure out which ones are stressed and which ones are unstressed. And this is where dialectically we can vary a little bit, okay? Some people say um, these two things are parallel. When they say parallel, we're stressing this last syllable. Pronouncing it that way, it's parallel. We're putting lots of emphasis over here. When I pronounce the word parallel though, I pronounce it parallel. Okay, so that's going to put the stress here, parallel. So that's the scansion I'm going to work with in this particular poem. Okay, when we read the poem out loud, it says, Strauss Park is where these parallel paths part, okay? If you pronounce it parallel, 
then that's okay. You can go ahead and note that. But the way I hear it, we've got stress here, and then we have two unstressed syllables following. Okay? Alone. The way that we can determine this is by overpronouncing the word. So do we say alone or do we say alone? Right? Do we say alone or do we say alone? It's kind of quiet, it's a little hard to hear, but we're putting our emphasis back here. Yes, I feel so alone, right? We put the emphasis, we put the extra oomph into that second syllable when we pronounce it, okay? Then we have watcher, watcher. So are we saying watcher or are we saying watcher? Are we emphasizing this? Do we say the watcher's heart? No, we say watch er okay so this second syllable is unstressed okay then we have stretches stretches okay stretch is if we said stretches then this would be unstressed and this would be stressed we would be putting all of our emphasis back here but we're saying stretch, we're putting all of our oomph, we're putting all of our emphasis on this front part of the word. And then we kind of fall off here, we get quieter, okay? And then we get to elastic. The watcher's heart stretches, elastic. Where are we putting that emphasis? Elastic. Are we saying elastic? Are we saying elastic? Are we saying elastic or are we saying elastic? Okay, elastic. This middle part, this middle syllable, this is where we're putting our emphasis. This is where the oomph is. So this is the one that we're going to mark as stressed. Okay, so we've got our bigger words. Um, I'm gonna take this off so that we can actually see what we're doing here. Okay, so now that we've determined this, we can place these marks of scansion in our lines of poetry, okay? So we have parallel paths. He goes alone from there. The watchers heart stretches elastic in its love and fear. Okay, so we've started filling in some of our scansion here. Now we need to go through and scan the little words. Now at this point, we've had a little bit of practice over pronouncing our words. Okay, so we're gonna read these lines a couple of times, and then I'm really gonna stress to you what I hear, and I'm gonna mark the rest of the scansion. Okay, so Strauss Park is where these parallel paths part. He goes alone from there. The watcher's heart stretches elastic in its love and fear. Strauss Park is where these parallel paths part. He goes alone from there. The watcher's heart stretches elastic in its love and fear. Okay, so when I read that, I'm saying Strauss Park is where these parallel paths part. Okay, these are getting lots of emphasis. They're getting lots of oomph. We're really just pushing on these words and we're really pushing on these two words right here, okay? He goes alone from there. The watcher's heart. Hmm, I hear something in there. Do you hear that? He goes alone from there. The watcher's heart. He goes, he goes alone from there. The, hear my voice drop down? He goes alone from there. The watcher's heart. Okay, he goes alone from there. The watcher's heart. 
Hear that? When we look at this, look here. We've got this pattern of these little marks. Make this longer so that it doesn't look the same as the uh, little marks that we have there. Okay, look at this. We've got these little guys, all of them, in this nice row. And we heard it when we said it out loud. He goes alone from there, the watcher's heart. Okay, we can hear it when we say it out loud. Always be sure to read out loud. Because if I were to scan it without that, if I were just to read it in my head, I might stress some of these differently. Like I might not stress this word, this there right here. I might not stress it, but because when I read it out loud, my voice kind of falls into that pattern, I hear something. And I'm gonna mark this as a stressed syllable, okay? So then we've already started here. Stretches elastic in its love and fear. So let's read it a couple times without messing with it. Stretches elastic in its love and fear. Stretches elastic in its love and fear. Stretches elastic in its love and fear. Okay, so I'm hearing in its love and fear. But I'm a little torn on this guy. Elastic in its love and fear. Elastic in its love and fear. This might be a stress syllable. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure. You might scan it either way. And I'm interested in hearing what you come up with. Okay? So when we look at this now, um, we're going to talk about meter soon, and you're going to see this example again in the lecture um, video that I create for you, okay? But we don't really, we've got too stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, too unstressed, too stressed. So we don't really have a pattern here. We do have a pattern here. Off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Okay, it's perfect pattern going across. This one, we've got on, off, off, on, off, off, maybe off, maybe on, <laughs> right? On, off, on. So these two don't follow a particular pattern, but this one does. And marking those syllables allows us to see that. So it would be interesting to scan the rest of the poem to see if any of the other lines in the poem follow this particular structure, okay? When we look at this here very shortly in that meter lecture, we're gonna see that this is an example of iambic pentameter. This is not, this is not, and there's a reason why these two lines don't fall into a pattern, which we'll also talk about. So be looking for the term counterpoint in the lecture. But I hope that that's helpful for understanding how we scan words in a poem. So again, syllables that we emphasize, including single syllable words, we mark with this right here. Words that we don't give a lot of oomph to, or syllables that we don't give a lot of oomph to, right, depending on whether we're looking at a single syllable or a multisyllabic word, okay, we mark with this off stress, okay? This little, this little mini U. So I want you guys to practice with Scansion. I have given you an assignment where you're gonna go through and scan a poem that we've already read before. It does not have a set metrical pattern in it, but I want you to see what it does have in it because we're also gonna be talking about some other forms of rhythm in poetry. So I really want you to practice with Scansion. Um, we're gonna do an exercise where you compare your Scansion to your classmates, just to kind of see what you guys come up with and whether you come up with any common structures. And then we can talk about some differences in pronunciation. We can put it up on the board and talk about it together. Um, whatever you guys want to do, but just practice with it and be sure to ask me any questions about Scansion that you have because it can be a little bit complicated. It can be challenging, especially when you're first starting out. So use a pencil, 
do your best with it and bring any questions that you have to class.